Have you ever wondered if school glue is stronger than Typhon glue? Well, today we're going to give that a test. I have this school glue that I picked out uh, from Walmart in the school section, and uh, you see this everywhere in schools where kids use it to, for crafts. And this is something you can get at the Home Depot that's specifically made for, for wood. So today, I want to find out, is this stuff really strong enough to use for wood? Can you use it if you don't have any of the Typhon type wood glue? We will see uh, which one's stronger, and you may be surprised by the results. School glue is made from polyvinyl acetate, which is commonly called PVA. PVA is a vinyl polymer that has great adhesion properties for porous materials such as paper and wood. The adhesive that seals envelopes and holds wallpaper to the wall is PVA. It is even used as a primer for drywall. We see the uses of PVA in the woodworking industry. Many manufacturers of sandpaper use PVA as the adhesive for peel and stick sandpaper disc or rolls. Type Bond Type 1 wood glue is made from aliphatic resin emulsion, which is commonly referred to as carpenters or yellow glue. It has similar properties to PVA, but is specifically formulated to have high tack with a quick set time. Type Bond is more resistant to moisture when compared to PVA glue. Both PVA school glue and Type Bond Type 1 are similarly priced. For this test, I glued up two pieces of red oak. One set was glued with school glue and the other with Type Bond Type 1 glue. Before gluing, the mating surfaces were joined to ensure that the glued surfaces were as flat as possible. Equal amounts of glue were used for each set and both samples were clamped tight. Both sets had adequate glue squeeze out, which shows that the joints were properly clamped. All right, well here's the pieces that have been glued up. I'm gonna take those out of the clamp. Um, the glue is dry completely. I left it overnight, so I let it dry uh, for uh, uh, enough time to uh, make a good joint. And when I did glue it up, I made sure that I put enough glue. Uh, the school glue, and I'll have more, I'll have better pictures. Um, the school glue actually dried clear, very translucent. The wood glue dried, uh, had more of a yellow tint to it, which is, is common for this. So, how we do the test? The reason I cut the notch in here is it's going to actually go in and I'm going to clamp that piece and as I clamp the direction in this direction here, we should separate the piece of uh, the pieces uh, to, uh, away from each other. So that's the general idea of the test. Now, some of the tests that I've seen before will actually uh, shear the the wood. That means that they'll actually push in this direction and pull in this direction to shear it. This is more of a pull apart. Uh, so. The, the strength of the glue will really show is if it takes the grain with it. So uh, a weaker glue will actually fail in the glue and a strong glue will actually hold the wood together so much so that when the, when the joint fails, the wood goes with the glue. So um, that's what we're going to do here. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. This is a clamp that I'm using. This is a Bessie uh, clamp and it's rated up to 1,500 pounds clamping pressure. So I'm simply going to place this piece of wood here, and I'm going to place this block right here. And this is the, uh, we'll start with the uh, school glue. And we'll set this up, and we'll give it a crank, and we'll see what happens. Alright, so I'm giving it a go. Wow, this is strong. This is not even... It's not even budging. I may mean, actually have to throw another clamp on there. It's amazing how strong that joint is. So I'm gonna grab another clamp. All right, now I have two clamps, and I'm gonna take turns pushing these back and forth until I hopefully can get this thing to break. You can probably hear it actually creaking. 
All right, I'm going back up. It's popping right now. All right, we have complete separation of the piece. And it's actually still together. And look at this. Wow, this is something I wasn't expecting. It actually penetrated the grain, and I'll have better pictures of it. But that was actually a very strong joint right there. So next, let's do the wood glue. And obviously, I think the wood glue is going to be stronger than the school glue. So we'll go ahead and rub this one up and see what it does. So I have this ready to go. So I'm gonna start clamping, just like I did with a school glue sample. I'm just gonna simply just continue to clamp down until I hear some creaking and popping. And then hopefully this will, uh, we'll take a look at the results. It's over 3,000 pounds. You can hear it popping. Wow, I, you know, just the pressure that I was using to break the pieces apart, this actually seemed easier uh, as I'm turning this clamp with the wood glue than it was the skull glue. Um, so we'll take a closer look and, and see what the results are. So the results are un really unconclusive at this point. Uh, looking at the two and, and it really seems like when the grains are actually when the glue is is pulled separated you know perpendicular to the application it seems like both glues would actually uh, do well in holding up with most tests that you see they actually have a butt joint and they compress the load and where it fails maybe in an end grain or a lap joint situation where the glue is being sheared in this application, we're actually separating it. And I feel that that would be more of a real life scenario of failure if you are gluing up a tabletop or you have multiple boards glued up. Um, for some reason, the, the table is dropped or picked up uh, from the underside. Uh, this would be more, I think, of a failure where you're actually having the glue pulled away. Um, so, looking at these two, my opinion that I really went into thinking was that wood glue would be superior, that it would only take one clamp, and that's why I started the test with one clamp on the school glue, because I thought, well, maybe that's all it's gonna take, just one clamp. And I was really shocked that it actually took two clamps. That's over 3,000 pounds of force uh, to separate the uh, school glue. And the wood glue, um, when I used, when I was cranking on the clamp, it seemed a little less work to put it in uh, to, to have it separated so uh, final conclusion as far as strengths you know they're, they're both a polymer based glue they're a PVA the type on type 1 PVA is more uh, designed for wood because it has uh, better characteristics for uh, gripping and setup uh, and it's actually rated they actually have if you go to the website they actually have ratings on how strong the glue is uh, and it's probably better for uh, less creep, and creep means that over time the, the glue will, will settle and, and move. So this is formulated specifically for wood, whereas school glue is formulated for a multiple array of paper and, um, and wood. So you're not going to have a specific formulation for that. So in conclusion, if, this, if, if you had to use wood, uh, school glue, it would probably be fairly strong for what you would want. Um, probably wouldn't be good for staining, you know, or finishing or sanding that I haven't even 
you know, considered in this test. Um, but as always, the fail safe is your uh, PVA wood glue. Uh, you can't go wrong with it. Well, thank you for watching my video and uh, leave any comments below and uh, subscribe if you like what you see and I'd love to produce more videos and uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you.